Okay, so we are going to prove the Kaplowski density theorem. So what we wanted to show was that if A is a self-adjoint is a unitary star algebra, and A double So we want to say that the unit ball of A is SOT dense in the unit ball of A double star. See the volume of density told us that he weighs the unit of star algebra, he does SOG tens and is double commuter. To say that the, if, you take, if you take the unit ball, it is SOG tens and the unit ball is a double commuter. And so we will actually prove this by, by proving that, uh, in fact, if you take uh, By, by this, I will mean the Hermitian elements of A, such a joint elements of A. Then, uh, we want to say that is a sort of dense in A double prime H one. And in fact even if we take positive ones. Hello. Now class to Now, now phone for now. Okay. This is what it is. And, and so, let me get rid of the easy part, the dilemma in place, Kaplansky density. Suppose I know that the self joints in the approximating star algebra, the unit ball is dense in the 
double comic, you will watch the double comic card. Then you look at uh, this red B equal to They are not unitary. Um, so he is so in all of this, he is not saying anything about the unit. Sorry, I have said they am wrong. The theorem is not so not unitary. So assume that A is the star algebra. Which is SOT dense. In A double prime. A does not have to have a unit for this condition to be satisfied. And for example, it, okay. For example, finite rank operators are SOT dense in B of H. Finite rank operators are SOD dense and B of H. What does B of H mean? For, give me any unit vector. I will be able to find something from the approximate connection which is close to your given operator at that unit vector. So if I have an operator A and you give me the vector xi, I take any operator that sends xi to A xi and is zero of the orthogonal counterpart of A. In fact, rank one operators itself are uh, I, I, no, not no, finite rank operators are dense. No, so uh, so the so the reason I was uh, I was pausing here is that the B is not unitary. Uh, and it is a star algebra. If you multiply two such things, what do you get? Zero is by zero. No, no, no. No, they are not star algebra. What is this? 
It is not closed in this. What is the man saying? No, no, no. So, what he is saying is, look at M2 away. This will be SOD dense in M2 of A double prime. Because entry by entry you can approximate. So you can approximate the entire matrix from here. But but this is equal to M2 away. What is M2 of A double prime? See, what, what is M2 of A prime? So, this will be exactly all those things in the form uh, X prime saying look at M2 away prime. That will contain see this part of this thing, this, see this is really M2 C tensor A prime. If you take V times W by V, one of them is finite dimensional. Then it is just going to be all finite linear combination between the form something here to so something there. <coughs> so the, the, the element in M2 of A, which is AIJ, you can think of a summation AIJ tensor. Summation EIJ tensor EIJ. Then right here the multiplication is just uh, entry wise or coordinate wise. Okay, this is equal to this. So, so the thing to remember is that uh, this, this is a theorem that uh, we will prove later in. Uh, and if we get the the. The actual theorem is that for any two one and another brush. So yeah, the <coughs> so 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 what do I mean by this? I mean Actually, I should write this. This is the notation they use. By this, one means uh, m tensor one to n one tensor n double prime.
You, you want all algebra to form extensive 1 and 1 tends to y. So you want the 1 over algebra generated by those. Or there is the same with generated by all things to form extensive y. So that is what one means by m ten the one the, the test product of two one over algebra. By definition it is a one over algebra. And what I'm saying is actually I don't need a set. It is equal to this. And then the statement is that if you take m tensor n cometron, there will be m cometron tensor n cometron. So this is for you to just uh, keep in uh, in mind as a, as a check. See, if you take m two a prime, this is m two tensor a prime. Here m two c is sort of acting on c two. So what is the cometron of M two C? M two C is everything. So the cometron of M two C is just scalars. Right? B of H cometron is just scalars. So it will be scalars tensor A prime. Uh, actually, I have written the other way. Uh, Okay, I uh, uh, no, because uh, I, I said before that I want to think of A tensor 1 as a, a so, so I should think of it, I should think of M2 A as A tensor M2 C. Then the cometron of A tensor M to C will be A cometron tensor 1, tensor C. But the C can be taken to the other side of the tensor problem. <coughs> it is going to be things to the form A prime tensor 1. That means A prime, A prime on the diagonal. So you, you may not, uh, I, you, you haven't seen a proof of this fact. But when one of them is B of H, you should be able to prove it. So I, so, so I want you to prove See that when you go through this exercise, you will go through the exactly the thing that we used in the proof of one number double cometron theorem. A tensor one cometron is a cometron tensor one, and a tensor one cometron is a cometron tensor B of H, then in this, this case a MN, and its cometron will be a double prime tensor 1. That is what we use to the proof of the double cometron theorem. So, so let me go back to this. So of this messy uh, thing. So, so let me just observe that if you take B as a, if you take M2 away, That is the star algebra which is 
sexual deviance. M2 of A double triangle. Now suppose I have proved this lemma, that is that the, the given a sulfate joint element in the unit bar of this closure, I can find sulfate joints in the unit bar of this approximating algebra, which are approximate there. Right. So, I, so I take anything here, if I take any sulfur joint here in the unit ball, I can approximate that with sulfur joints over here. So I take this sulfur joint, 0, x, x star 0. Where x is anything. But I want this to be the unit ball, so that means the X should have norm less than or equal to 1. So X must be in a double prime 1. So, what would the lemma say, lemma implies there exists xn11, xn22, sorry, 12, xn21, xn22. You can find a sequence like this which converges to this self joint SOT with the norm of each of these less than equal to 1 for all n and these things should be self joint x2, xn21. Then I want this whole matrix to be self joint. Right? That is what the assumption will give you. There, there will be self joint and the whole matrix must have norm one, less than equal to one. So what can you say about each entry? Each entry is obtained by pre and post multiplying by a projection. Right? Is this Xn12 can be thought of as 1 by P, X, P, cut down to that corner, where P is 1, 0, 0, 0. So if the whole thing is norm less than equal to 1, each of them must certainly have norm less than equal to 1. So what do you find? And these things are all in, they, they are all coming from here. They are all coming from the approximating algebra. That means, in particular, Xn12 is in A and its norm is less than equal to 1 and Xn12 converges to X. See, the matrix of operators converges to SOD to a matrix of operators. <coughs> that is different only if each entry converges. So, this is another excess. Huh? Why? 
because you have taken zero x x plus that is in n two way of it. It will only tell you that x21 equal to x12 star. The whole thing is self adjoint. That doesn't mean the 1, 2 entry is self adjoint. See the matrix 0, x, x star 0 is self adjoint no matter what x is. x doesn't have to be self adjoint. No, no, what is the confusion? The game is telling that A each one is SOB means in A each level. The game is telling that A each one can be approximated by A each. A double prime H one is approximated by A a H one correct. Now you have taken zero x extra that is in M two A double prime one. So and it's self adjoint. Self adjoint. So you will here get self adjoint. That's right. That means this whole matrix is self adjoint. The matrix self adjoint does not say anything about the one one two entry. So once this converges S O T to all V for W O T to and so on. See here the operator may be with different spaces. You must just interpret SOD and WOD in the correct sense. To say SOD topology for operators from H to K means that for every vector in H, the operators must converge at that vector to the corresponding limiting operator. Right? So so then then you would have got For for any x in the unit ball of A double prime, you would have got an x12 in the unit ball of A, which converges to to that strong operator point, which is what you wanted to prove. So Kaplansky's theorem it follows from this specific case that we proved. If you assume they are all self adjoint, then, then, then you can do it with self adjoint approximates. Okay. So we, so we want to prove the lemma. So I remember what we know is that A is a star algebra SOT lens in A W. Now, uh, now I observe that this is the same as saying that this is because again the same thing. See, this, this is after all a, a vector space. So, if you take its closure, it, it is going to be a closed convex set. No man.
see the closure is see which close sets and close in which topology. See for example, uh, let me take uh, suppose I take a closure in SRT. So one of these is contained in the other, which is contained in which? If something is, if something converges SOT, it converges WOT. Which? SOT converges implies Converges, but closed. So, uh, contained in if you are an SOT closure then you can find the net converging SOT and hence also WOT so the demand must be in the so this is the inclusion and this is what one has usually but what I am saying is that observe that if you take a, a closure SOT I'm saying this is the SRT closed subspace. Or B of H. It is the sub algebra, A is the star algebra. So it is a vector space, so it, so it is convex. And we have shown that the SOD continuous linear functionals and the WOD continuous linear functionals are the same. That means that the closed convex, the, 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 the convex sets are closed in the one topology precisely when they are closed in the other topology. Because being closed it is detected by the continuous functionals. Hence, this would also be WOT plus. And it is already a subalgebra, so, so it is a subalgebra. Okay, so first I, I observed that. Uh, just like you saw this, clearly a norm closure because norm convergence implies SOT convergence, implies WOT convergence. So the closures will be in the reverse order. So the, the norm closure of A is going to be contained in all of this. So, it is enough for me to prove that if we take the norm closure of A, so, so I am trying to say that without loss of generality, I may assume A is norm closure. Why? Because I take its norm closure. That is somebody who sits between A and suppose B is norm closure of A. Then A is contained in B, which is contained in A. Closure is OD. Therefore, B closure is also contained in A closure. 
uh, in fact So what he says is, if you take anything in the norm closure away, if you take a B in P circuit joint unit ball, then you know that B can be approximated by B is norm limit, norm limit of B1. If, if, if something is approximated by a sequence in B, then it, you, and if this is norm 1, then the norms of the approximate will also converge to there. So you can divide by the norm of that thing. If Bn converges to B in norm, then Bn over norm Bn will, will converge to B over norm B. And assuming that B is norm 1. I'm saying something really trivial. See, if, if Bn converges to B in norm, then certainly norm Bn converges to norm B. Okay? And so if norm of B was less than or equal to 1, then uh, okay you will consider uh, okay the 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 daily I shouldn't be wasting time I'm just getting a muddle or silly thing the the triviality you should be able to prove that uh, so I'll give, I'll include, give all these as it exercise for you. If, if B is in B H one norm closure. That implies that B is in B one age long closure.
told uh, this is the second exercise for you to convince yourself that because of all all these observations it is enough to show uh, if you know the day is already a sea star algebra <coughs> then we are, i want to prove that it is a solid dense in its unit bar is a solid dense in the unit bar of its double cohometon because norm closure respects the unit bar in some sense elements in the unit ball of a double prime self adjoint elements in the unit ball of a double prime <coughs> okay so you can you can for example see take this uh, yeah so See, you look at the map x going to x plus x star by two. Now this is this uh, if we call this map F, then F maps. Uh, A double prime one two A double prime H one correct. The double prime one means A one or double prime. Huh? The double prime one. If you start with the unit uh, something of now in, in the unit ball of A, A double prime, then the real part will also be in the unit ball. Okay, now this mapping, what kind of continuity does it have? See x going to x star. Is it S O D continuous? It is not S O D continuous. As an example of the shift and the powers of the shift. So, if you take U star to the n, they will converge strongly to zero. But But u to the n does not converge strongly to zero. But it is W O T continuous. So this is W O T continuous. So what we can see is that this is see A double prime one. See we know that A double prime is sigma weakly compact. Yeah, you see, see what weakly cl closed. It's a one-dimensional algebra, right? Sigma weakly 
uh, see for the for, uh, on the unit ball to say the sigma weakly closed and weakly closed are the same thing. So the, you take the unit ball of the one Hamel algebra, it is uh, W of T closed. The WOT and uh, sigma, uh, sigma weak topologies agree on the unit ball. But the unit ball is sigma weakly compact by Alia Lucia. Uh, So, so maybe I should go back and do the have a, another thing on this uh, another look at the sigma weak topology. Uh, Fear pins to Don't even appeal to them. No, they, 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 they. Okay. No, this mapping is WOT continuous. We know that A is uh, See, see, and and also this is a W O T close convex W O T or S O T. It is the unit ball. Yeah. Uh, so, so what I want to say is that if you take A So what you know is that A H is so no. What you know is that A is so dense in A double prime, and hence also W D dense. Okay. And therefore, 
by by applying the continuous function we see that a1 see it it send the unit ball to this uh so so i'm saying f of a is going to be f of a double prime is w o t continuous then f is w o t continuous here something will dense in something in the w o t topology then it was map this set the image must be of w o t dense in the image there but that means that means what f of a is nothing but uh i uh, let me no i want to look at no or oh, just say it here therefore a h is w t dense in a double prime a. okay now we want to get to the unit ball but i uh, by those exercises i have said it is enough to consider the case where a is a c star as well right? and hence it is closed under the continuous functional calculus for self adjoint elements so if you take an uh, okay so 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 let, let x be an element of a double prime h1 so i want to approximate this sot by or the okay so, so there is some functional calculus going to be used so this self adjoint consider the function f having minus 1 to 1 to itself defined by f of t equals 2t by 1 plus t square and notice that you you computer derivative the prime of u v u v prime so is for the 2 for the 1 2 into t into 2t minus One plus t square, or one plus t square square. 
Do you work? Teach good math from not good. No, no, it is you prime, we you know, want to sign the wrong. U over V prime. Think of it as U into 1 over V the whole prime. So it will be U prime times 1 over V. And then when you differentiate it, 1 over V only you get a minus V prime. So it will be U prime V, which is this, minus U V prime, which is this, over V squared, which is 1 minus T squared over which is positive in the open interval. Consequently, it is strictly increasing in the interval. And you can see that at uh, t equals minus 1, it is minus 1, and plus 1, it is 1. So it is strictly increasing function from minus 1, 1 to itself. In fact, one can write down the inverse, you see that. Straightforward algebra will tell you what the inverse is. And the inverse is going to be given by Oh, you're not using the inverse to really straight away. Okay. Okay, that means that if you take this f of x, that is a continuous function, and, and x is the unit ball. The self return in the unit ball means its spectrum is contained in minus 1 to 1. So you can apply f of x and you will land in the C star algebra generated by x. So you notice that this function is 0 at 0. So you don't even have to take C star algebra generated by x and 1. It is actually in C star algebra generated by x. So, so this f of x is going to be in No, where was it? Is also going to be in A double prime H. One. And by what you know, anything in, in A double prime H can be approximated as W or T by things in so what did you show? Anything in A double prime H it's a W or T limit of things in A H. So you can find there exists And, and then B I and actually since you are in, in boundaries as even sequences will do. Okay. Because the SOD or WOT on bounded sets is materialized. So to say it in the closet means that it is the sequence from the approximating set, you converge to it. 
So you can find a sequence Bn in a H such that Bn converges to the Oh, he is going. He is doing the inverse. Sorry, I should have written there, looked at the inverse map. Sorry, I'm making a mess of this. Uh, so, so, what is the inverse of this mapping here? Okay, the inverse map is given by G of Y equals Y into one plus root one minus Y square inverse inverse. And the statement is that this G is the inverse of F. So minus one to one. So, so you just write that and solve, no? If I so uh, so I want G of Y I want F of Y to be X. That means I want two Y by one plus Y squared to be X. So what does that mean? That means I'm going to solve for y in terms of x, right? x into 1 by y squared goes to y. That is x y squared <laughs> minus 2y plus x is 0. That means y is No, that's going X squared, no? For AC, it means X squared. Right, 2X. Four minus four x square. Hmm. 
Boris. No, but I don't like the dividing by two eggs. What if x were zero? But the right hand side certainly look, doesn't look like 0 when x is 0. Uh, the equation, 2 by 1 plus root x. This 2 plus root 4 by 4x squared divided by 2x. minus root 1 minus x squared by x. x equals 0, if you take the minus sign then you get 0 for x. You're reading the inverse of this thing. So let me stay with this guy's proof. Satira is much more methodical, I think. So he says, so he used the rotation m equals a double prime, which is a one of an algebra. And he says, you look at m in, in, in x, I'm just repeating what we said, x plus x star by 2 in mh is W or D continuous. And you know that A is W or T dense in M. Therefore, it follows that uh, when I apply f to this, f of a, which is going to be contained in h, 
ए एच एस डब्ल्यू डी टेन्स एक्चुअली लेट लेट टेक इन एम वन No, no, he is not, not doing taking M1. He is just saying, he is probably going to do the whole thing. Okay, then age then is dense in MH, is what it will say. By this continuity of this function. This map sends M to MH and A to H. A is dense in M, so A is dense in MH. Okay. <laughs> then he said, look at the map, and they said, uh, he doesn't even give it, give it a name. Minus one to one. T going to two T by one plus T square. This is increase strictly in facing homeomorphism of tindable not to itself. Okay. So let us start with suppose X is in image one. So this will have an inverse mapping, right? I can apply that inverse mapping to X. So let us write let G equal to, so we call this F, let G equal to F inverse. So minus 1 to 1, minus the same range in domain. So then, if, since, uh, if, and, and let's put y equal to g of x. Then, what do you know, then y is going to be in, it is going to be in mh1. It is self joint, it is going to be a unit norm because the function ends in minus 1 to 1. And x equals f of y. Right? That means it, it is. 2y, 1 plus y squared inverse.
1 plus t squared times uh, f t equals 2 t. So, you apply the function of calculus, you will get the same thing for the operator, and then you can take the inverse. And 1 plus y squared is invertible because y is self adjoint, so y squared is positive. Okay. Uh, but you know that there exists B I in A H. And then B i converges no, we only had weak convergence, no. But earlier what we said was there A H was only not be W O T dense in M H. So you can find B I which converts W O T to Y. Now it is the same thing. See, if you take A H and take its W O T closure, there is going to be a W O T close convex set. So there is going to be S O T close also. So, so So, see, I, you want to say that you want to say, I'm sorry you made a mess of today's class. I'm going to have to start this all over again. That's because I didn't prepare this thing too carefully. This requires some work. So, so let us uh, let me do a homework properly and then come next time. This was a. <coughs>